Hello there YouTube, Michael Bowers here, hopefully doing my final movie review of the films that are out on DVD. This review is going to be of the film Knowing, directed by Alex Koryas, who many people whom you don't know, directed by Robot. And this stars Nicolas Cage and Rose Bryan, if I pronounced it right. Anyway, the plot of the movie is actually quite original, and it is basically this. In 1959, there is an idea to put a bunch of pictures in a time capsule at an elementary school, to under which 50, the aim of which 50 years later is that kids will open it and find out what they drew, what they thought, what they thought the future was going to hold and look like. This girl called Lucinda Embry instead draws a bunch of numbers that refer to future disasters in the next 50 years in perfect sequence global disasters to come. And then 50 years later, Nicolas Cage's son, Caleb Kosler, finds these numbers and gives them to John Kosler, Nicolas Cage, and then uh, the rest of the film basically is finding out what disasters yet to come and how to stop them. And that's the basic plot of the movie. Now, I have to say this movie is like Slumdog Millionaire, opinions aside, like Slumdog Millionaire, knowing on um, Slumdog Millionaire the two original ideas that I have seen throughout the history of film. Particularly these two are the most original ideas for movies I've seen this year. Anyway, so, you know, knowing, you know, a lot of people ask me, is it a good movie? I'd say yes. There are, mm, one, there's one major flaw and a couple of minor flaws, but I'll get to those in the end. First off, you know, I've not seen, now acting, as you know, acting comes first. Nicolas Cage, I've not seen in many other movies. I've seen him in the two National Treasures. This is the first movie I actually saw Nicolas Cage in, by the way, before you say anything. And... Uh, I've seen him in the now two National Treasure movies. He's good in, really good in those. I like him as Benjamin Gates. He's fantastic. And particularly the second one I loved. I've seen him in Next, which in some ways was good. You know, I did enjoy it, but in other ways it could have been better. And then, of course, comes... Sorry, comes one of his latest project work, Knowing. Um, so he's, put, he's good in this movie. He, he has to portray a father obviously and then he's concerned about the fate of the world by trying to stop these future disasters from occurring and he portrays that really really well I think that he I see him as a father figure and from what I've heard in real life he is a father so that makes it a bit easier more believable for him to be a father figure role in this movie and also I can sort any and because of National Treasure and, and Next I can see him as portraying some sort of a hero heroic world role sorry um, you know, so he did a decent job in this movie. I was impressed with his impressed with the work he did, and I think he's probably the best actor in the movie. And considering that he is the main character, main, mostly. Rose Bryan, who sorry, uh, the actor who played the son, Caleb Kosler. Now a lot of people seem to think that he was rubbish and terrible, but I have to say, um, that I'm mixed with that. I mean, admittedly, overall, it doesn't bother me. You know, why are people so nitpicking about his acting? I don't know. Um, firstly, I didn't have a problem with it. I felt that he did a decent enough job in this movie as Nicolas Cage's son. And, you know, admittedly, there were some things that could have been best. You know, maybe it was, uh, when, he, when he cries, it could I think I noticed it was a little bit fake. It could have been believable. So that maybe could have been improved. Other than that, though, I didn't have a problem with him. He just seemed, he seemed to flow into the film. And, obviously, at the end, he, as it is, he is at his best. Who else is there? Um, the little girl who plays Lucinda Embry was fantastic at her, her role. You could see that she looked disturbed by these uh, numbers and visions that she was seeing about these disasters in the future. You know, it, it, it was fantastic to watch this. It was, you know, you could tell how disturbed she was by some of the stuff. It was incredible. And particularly one creepy scene. And it's not really a spoiler. It comes at the start, before the main opening credits. Um, you can see her scratching her fingers at a door. It was so grotesque to see blood on her fingers. It was it's not too graphic, but it's it is disturbing. It is disturbing. So acting wise, that's out of the way. Um movie wise, I really like this movie. When I first watched it I thought, okay, this has gotta be this has gotta be one of the best movies I've seen in terms of original ideas in ages. And admittedly I was I was in, very impressed by the movie. And particularly these, the disaster scenes seen in the trailers particularly, you see 
two very important disasters that you've seen, an airplane crash scene and a subway crash scene. So first of all, let's start with the aircraft scene. Um, now a lot of people could be asking if this film is too heavy on CGI. I don't think it is. And for a film, if you've watched the movie, I think you could agree with me when you say this film actually requires CGI. You can't exactly do an, aim an airplane crash or subway crash for real. Oh, P.S. By the way, we're going to kill those people by doing an by doing a crash for real. You know, sorry, you can't do that. So obviously CGI is required. But I was impressed with the CGI in both of the scenes. Obviously the aim of the CGI is to make them look real. And I can tell that this movie does it really well. Particularly the airplane. I mean the subway crash is good, but the airplane crash is fantastically done. And considering that it's all one shot, it makes it even better for me. I don't know why, it just makes it even better. So I really do find that the CGI in the airplane crash scene is really magnificent. It makes you look like you're actually there watching this airplane crash and loads of people and 81 people dying except for death toll for the in the movie. You watch them dying in front of your eyes and it's just from just thrilling. I mean, I mean you know what I mean by thrilling. It's thrilling to watch the special effects, but it makes it look so realistic. It's unbelievable. It really is. But in a good way. And obviously the subway crash scene is pretty good as well. It's a bit more epic than the airplane crash scene because it's a bit more Nicholas Cage's character, John Close, I was a bit more aware of it this future this time around. Phew. And, yeah, he was just, he was just pretty good. So, you know, but, I mean, in that scene, you know, both, both the airplane crash and something crash scenes were great for CGI. They were the two best action, the two best, like, thriller action sequences, and two of the best disaster scenes I've seen in movies. Easily. Now, a lot of people would think, I think that, that might sound like I think this movie is fantastic. Really, unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, for about 95% of this movie, I would have given it a fantastic rating. I really would have done. I would have given it four and a half stars easily throughout most of the movie. But I mean, minus the minor of the couple of flaws, you know. I mean, one flaw, I one flaw. But I'm going to tell you the things I didn't really like about it, and then you'll find out why my grade gone down a little bit. For one minor, another minor flaw was the movie was a little bit too loud. I think it's, it could have been quieten down a little bit, because I think sometimes it can put off movie goers, particularly some who are very sensitive to sound, hypersensitive as we call it. It's very, um, it's a bit too loud for some people's liking. So it's like another minor issue, but that doesn't bother me too much. The one thing, the one major flaw that does bother me is the ending. Now, before the last five, about an hour and 45 minutes, 46 minutes to be precise actually, since I watched the DVD recently. An hour and 46 minutes into the movie, I thought it was fantastically done. It was, I really enjoyed it from beginning to end, or well, from beginning up to that point. The last five minutes of the movie, I think, are dreadfully awful. I think I hated the last five minutes of the movie. I d and, I th and although the ending isn't exactly a typical ending you would believe from a movie of this sort, well, from what this movie involves story-wise, you would think that... You know, it has. You think it has a, an ending that you can obviously guess. It doesn't. Believe me, it does not have the ending you might think it has. And although it is different, I think it was probably the most unoriginal ending or uninvented ending I've ever seen. Um, I don't know. What, a lot of people will probably like the ending. Some do, some don't. I hated the ending. I felt as I got to the end of the movie. Overall, I did feel a tiny little bit ripped off. By the last five minutes, overall, I, w I was ripped off overall by the last five minutes. Other than that, the movie fantastic. It's well, it's great now, but it's fantastically done. I really love this movie. I like this. I like this movie a lot. And, but it's just unfortunate for me that that ending really for me screwed it up. You know, I mean, I can sort of see why they chose to do that ending. I can see it, but I just think that they could have maybe added more people into the last scene of the film, the very last scene. I think there could be more people there, put it that way. So, but anyway, um, the four, without if the ending had been better, it would have been easily four and a half stars out of five for me, but the ending's kind of dragged it down to four. It's still a great movie, but it's just it just could have been better if that ending was fixed. So overall, four out of five stars for knowing, and this should be my last review of films on DVD. Um, I mean, it probably won't be, there'll be, I don't know if there might be another one in the future, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, other than that, you know, I do recommend knowing for people who like a good futuristic thriller. That's what it is. It's a good thriller. It it, it had me um, 
stuck to my seat from beginning to end, and it was a, it was just overall a quite an enjoyable movie. So overall, four or five stars for knowing. Until next time, you too, Michael Bowers. Signing out.